This is so beautiful over here. A tropical plant paradise. And that thing just keeps on growing like crazy. The indoor care you can easily provide to produce a lush jungle like this. If we're being honest here, I mean, there is no better or prime example of tropical plants indoors than uh, what you see here in my urban jungle loft in downtown Denver. Plus, want to know a simple way to increase your collection for free? I have a couple of them because I've propagated them and turned them into other plants. In fact, the one over there, that one is so massive. I'm going to show you how to propagate these plants and turn them into new ones. That's right. This entire episode is dedicated to tropical plant indoor care and propagation. So let's get started. Well, hi everyone, I hope you're doing super well. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kevin and these are some of my plants. I like to talk about plant care and all that good stuff, so if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, today, we are focusing in on tropical plant indoor care and propagation, specifically propagation with this guy over here, but with a bunch of other different plants as well. Uh, this, my friends, I'd like to introduce you to, is another one of my philodendron Dean McDowell cuttings. The philodendron Dean McDowell is an absolutely stunning hybrid, a cross between philodendron pastizanum and the philodendron gloriosum. The philodendron gloriosum is hands down one of my favorite plants and like the Gloriosum, the Dean McDowell is also a crawler. In fact, I have some of my other crawlers right over here. Like the Gloriosum, for instance, as I was just referring to, I love its velvety leaves with those silver veining in between. They are so stunning, so beautiful. And I have a couple of them because I've propagated them and turned them into other plants. In fact, the one over there, that one is so massive. Every new leaf that comes out of it is just big balloon size, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, then right over here is my philodendron mimei with its beautiful silver cloud-like leaves. It's so stunning, and again, it's a crawler. Uh, fact is, is that most philodendron are climbers, so they climb up trees and nature, but uh, you do have your rare crawlers that crawl around the ground, like our Gloriosum here. And also, uh, this is another one of my uh, philodendron Dean McDowell cuttings. Now, I have to say, this plant is a really fast-growing plant. I was gifted a Dean McDowell by my buddy Todd over a year ago, and that plant only had two leaves at the time, but I'll tell you, as soon as it started growing, it just started popping out new leaf after new leaf. So I started propagating it, and I have to say, one of the fastest propagating tropical indoor plants I've ever had. In fact, the last time that I propagated and did a video on it was just this past October. I didn't think that it would root this well with the philodendron Dean McDowell. I mean, like I said, it's only been up there three weeks. Yeah, so the fact that it's uh, that much root growth in just three and a half weeks is insane. And honestly, the same exact thing happened with this guy. I mean, take a look at its roots. I cut it up about three to four weeks ago and left it inside this glass vase with water in it. And its roots just took off. And it's got a nice growth point on it as well. So I'm looking forward to potting this up with you guys uh, because it is such a fun process and it's so cool to make more of these plants. Uh, and it's not just this cutting and the one I just showed you behind me, but uh, just beyond the camera, there is another one too. That's right outside of my bedroom door and that thing just keeps on growing like crazy. So uh, we're going to make this one grow even crazier, I believe. Unfortunately, the mother leaf, the mama leaf that produced all of these offsprings, um, she got really, she, she, just, she just had too many uh, plant babies and she wasn't doing well and her leaves started to brown and yellow and it was time. Her energy was being transferred into the new growth that uh, produced these beautiful cuttings and so unfortunately we had to lay her to rest and her memory will not be forgotten. 
But, uh, you know, before we go on with the propagation potting apart, I need to show you guys something because this is so beautiful over here. This is my philodendron Lanamii, and it is one of the rarest philodendrons out there. And the reason being is take a look at that new leaf that is coming in. Its new leaves come in this glossy, hot pink type color that lasts for several months until they mature and turn into a beautiful heart-shaped green color. Uh, like you can see with the rest of its leaves. But man, oh man, is that hot pink really getting to my heart and soul. It's so pretty. This plant has only been found to grow in a certain portion of Peru at elevations of 1,600 feet above sea level. So that's really cool. But, uh, you know, our main focus, of course, of course, of course, is our friend here, the philodendron Dean McDowell. Uh, and as you can tell by those roots, it is ready to get potted up. So that's what we should do. But, but to do that, we'll need some of our finest and most scientific uh, tools and, and utilities in order to make this happen, which of course are literally just a mat to use and then some soil and a pot and some rooting hormone powder. But you know, I like to think of it as science. I'm a scientist. I'm not really at all. I'm... I'm just Kevin. <laughs> but yeah, we'll lay this out just so I have some clean space to work on. Fortunately, my floors are hardwood, so, uh, you know, if any dirt or soil gets on the outside of it, I'll just sweep it up and take care of it. But, you know, uh, I don't like how far away you guys are, so why don't you come a little bit closer? Ah, there we go. I can see you guys so much better now. And I have to say, you all look so good today. You know, just if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. That's not me kissing up. I don't know what you're talking about. But what I did forget was the most important thing that we needed, which was the plant cutting. So here we go, folks. Here is the philodendron Dean McDowell cutting. Oh, and it is such a beautiful cutting. I can't wait to pop this up and turn it into its own plant. And what a beautiful plant it's going to be. It is going to be a stunner and a beautiful tropical indoor plant to discuss and to talk about when it comes to just general indoor tropical plant care. So with this tropical indoor plant being a crawling philodendron, um, it, like any other tropical plant, really loves the following things. Bright, indirect light, where the sun's not touching it. It likes to be watered, you know, frequently. Not overwatered, of course, because we don't want to lead our plants to root rot, which is the number one cause of indoor house plant death, including tropical plants, but it also thrives with good humidity. Humidity is crucial when it comes to tropical plants. I can't stress that enough, how much they thrive when they're in a humid environment. So if you don't have a humidifier, I highly suggest you getting one because it'll do wonders to your plant and you'll see it grow an insane amount. Now, because I'm here in Denver, Colorado, uh, with only western facing windows i use grow lights during the winter months and that really helps out with my tropical plants as well so what we're going to do first though with this propagation is we're going to put down a nice firm layer of my chunky aeroid soil mix which consists of a lot of things like soil activated charcoal perlite cocoa choir nuggets some orchid bark uh, all that good stuff. And it's chunky because a lot of tropical plants, like our friends here, the philodendron, well, they love having those big, massive roots just moving around freely and being able to not be condensed into such like compact soil. So it's always good to go with a tropical plant kind of potting mix, something that's going to be loose and chunky and... Um, uh, something that allows for air to go through quite easily. Uh, so now that I have my firm layer base down there, what I'm going to do next is, just because I have always got in the habit of using rooting hormone powder, is I'm just going to sprinkle some of these new roots, these beautiful roots that are on this philodendron Dean McDowell. And I'm just going to shake and bake them up, and then I'm going to place it inside the soil to a position that I want it to be in. Now, normally with crawling philodendron, 
what you would do is you would typically put them in like a more vertical, longer kind of pot, uh, very similar to the pot that I have this Gloriosa in. You see how long that pot is? Uh, that is because with a crawling philodendron that would crawl along the jungle floor, it would give it more space to move around in. I do that with a lot of my crawling philodendron, including the Mamei over there. But what I've got in the habit of, just because I really love the aesthetic look of it, is having my crawling philodendron in regular pots like this one. And uh, it's a clear pot, and what that does is it allows me to keep an eye on its root growth and to see how the roots are doing. And then what I do is that I just uh, take an exterior pot and I insert this plastic transparent pot inside there to hide uh, the fact that it is just a transparent pot because, I mean, they're not really pretty, but, you know. And, and what happens is, is that once the uh, plant runs out of space is that I just repot it into a much larger pot. And I'm going to show you an example because I need to do this with another philodendron, Dean McDowell, uh, that started off as a cutting like this one from the same mama plant. And that one needs to be cut up soon because it has run out of space in its regular pot. So there we go. It has plenty of soil and a good base. And the important thing to do with these crawling philodendron is to make sure that its growth point, which I showed you, is right there, that it is sticking up and that it is above the soil level because that's what it'll need in order to like crawl around and, and be able to, to grow new plants and new leaves. So we're gonna water that baby in a second, but first I want to show you a sample of what I was just referring to when it comes to crawling philodendron running out of space. And I was mentioning uh, another philodendron Dean McDowell cutting that came from the same mother plant, potted up in this beautiful uh, ceramic plant here. But see, this is what happens when they run out of space because unlike climbing philodendron that would just continue to climb up like a tree or a moss pole, this one just has nowhere to go. So what I'm waiting for is for this brand new leaf, which you can see is starting to um, come out and it'll unfurl probably in the next week or so and then turn into a leaf that looks just like the rest of these. And once that's done, I'll cut this plant up so it has more space and I'll propagate it into a new plant. And where I would wanna cut is exactly where these nodes are. And you can see those nodes on a crawling philodendron right there. So I'm going to cut like about a quarter of an inch right about there. And then I'll take this part, which will consist of these three leaves, these two right here, these two beauties, and then it's new leaf. And then I'll put them probably in that same glass vase. And then I guarantee you, three, three and a half weeks, four weeks most, um, they will grow roots just like that one did and get ready to be potted up. And what will happen once I cut uh, from that area there is that a new growth point will come in and the same plant will start growing new leaves uh, over and continue its uh, stem growth like that. And so I don't know if I'll always keep them in regular pots, but I figure, you know, I really like the aesthetic look of it, and that's really a big part of my plant journey and why I love tropical plants so much. So I'll probably continue to keep it in a pot like this um, instead of using some of those more vertical pots. But yeah, uh, what we're going to do now is we're just going to go over and we're going to water that philodendron Dean McDowell cutting that we just uh, potted up after propagation. Uh, yes, here we are in my kitchen where I cook meals but uh mostly take care of my plants because this is where the sink is and this is where the water comes from uh so we're just gonna water this baby and uh what i'm going to do is uh like if you've watched any of my other videos i always talk about how i mix in some little bit of fish fertilizer with my water and i'm gonna water this baby with some fish fertilizer and water 
for whatever reason, um, plants really love fish poop. And so not only uh, will other things like bright indirect lighting, humidity, um, good care, but when you're watering them, fish poop will make their leaves balloon in size. I kid you not. I was told this, oh gosh, probably a little bit over a year ago. And since then, uh, the amount that of size, like how large my plant's leaves have gotten is insane. And it didn't happen just like over a course of like months or something like that. It happened like immediately. So highly recommend it. And while this baby is dripping out its water, what we're going to do is I'm going to place it just behind me, which you cannot see on a mat where it can just kind of dry out a little bit more. And while that dries out, I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about tropical plant care tips. And for that, though, we have to head into the living room because if we're being honest here, I mean, there is no better or prime example of tropical plants indoors than uh, what you see here in my urban jungle loft in downtown Denver. Now, you might have noticed from uh, my other videos is that my tropical plants are really, really healthy, like super duper healthy. And the reason being, like I was explaining a bit earlier, is because of the conditions that I give them. The most important that I believe, not only obviously like the light coming in, which is just Western facing windows, which this time of year do not do as well. But like I said, I have grow lights scattered all over my uh, loft here. In fact, there's grow lights right there, there, there. And those are Soltec Solution grow lights, which are a bit pricier, about uh, 80 bucks a bulb. But let me tell you, my plants during the winter months love those bulbs just as much as they love the sunlight during the summer months. So they've made a big difference. So if you're looking to uh, grow your tropical indoor plant collection and you don't have the best lighting, highly suggest getting grow lights and not just those kind of cheaper ones that you'd find on like Amazon and stuff. Cause trust me, I have used those and I still do in some instances, but if you really want good growth, go with something that's more reputable, like those Soltec solution ones. And mind you, this is not sponsored by Soltec solutions, but the biggest thing that I wanted to mention was the fact of humidity. Like I was explaining to you, humidifiers are so crucial when it comes to tropical plants or just humidity in general. It allows for them to take in extra moisture, for their leaves to grow larger, and for them to maintain their health that we so desire. And that's so important because out in nature, where they are in tropical rainforests like South America and Central America, those are humid areas. And quite frankly, that's what they're used to. So if you want to see them grow really well, highly suggest humidity. Uh, as one of your top priorities and it could be as simple as just getting a humidifier or a couple of them so that is i would say about it for this video i have some really cool content in store for you guys coming up including some design techniques that i want to try out that i think that you guys will really enjoy so i hope you'll tune in for that one but if you haven't already um please like this video subscribe to my channel Hit that notification bell so whenever I have new planty content come in, you'll know right away. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to another one of my planty videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one.